Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now, today's uh, painting is going to be uh, a painting which I'm going to show you all my steps from start to finish. And uh, I'm trying to minimize the amount of strokes I use. I slow down, I show all the detail, and I'll show you some negative painting. I use a dot spray bottles for some of the techniques. But I'll go away from the beginning of the painting all the way to the end. And I think this will really show you uh, how to approach uh, a painting, a landscape painting, uh, with uh, just some basic strokes, basic shapes, but then add in some detail to make it interesting. So let's go to my paint table and let's get started. Now this is a reference uh, photograph here I'm going to use in uh, this, today's painting. And there's the design sketch I did with a little bit of a value study on the log cabin. And I start out with a little quarter sheet piece of paper or watercolor paper. And I've gone ahead and put in the background sky with cerulean blue paint uh, using a uh, half inch uh, natural hair brush by uh, silver brush. And also uh, put in the uh, foreground road using a uh, burnt sienna uh, watercolor. So this is my starting point here. Now this, uh, this layout here, I'm going to do a uh, minimal number of strokes in all this whole painting. So the background trees, I'm using cobalt blue, and I'm going around the uh, outside edge of the old cabin. And what this does, this will define the edge of the building and gives me a simple background value for some background trees. So I'm minimizing the strokes today. I'm just going to do a minimal number of uh, brush strokes and a number of amount of color I'm using. Now mixing up uh, some light green with yellow lemon and green number one mixture, I'm going to paint in the middle ground trees. So using the same brush. Now the middle ground trees, again, I'm going to use just basic strokes. I'm going to put in the, uh, the colors over here just to get a, a basic outline. Now we're minimizing the effort today. We're minimizing uh, the amount of uh, uh, brush strokes. Uh, simplify the outline of the structure. So I'm just outlining the edge of this tree using the uh, lemon yellow and green number one mix. You can see the variation of color. I pick up a little bit of green, then I'll pick up a little more yellow. But uh, I'm trying to keep a variable color over here uh, for this uh, middle ground tree. And I'm using a spray bottle also to add in some extra yellow. My dot spray bottle is uh, my palette in a bottle. That was uh, lemon yellow in the spray bottle. And uh, just to add a little texture and also add a little more color to that uh, middle ground tree. That's what the spray bottle is used for, for adding color and texture and also adding more color. So with a simplified uh, brush strokes here, just to get the outline of this particular area, which is a middle ground, middle ground tree on the left hand side of the painting. And I'm working a little bit on the edge, little, uh, overlapping that building. The overlapping uh, shows, will show depth in the painting. Overlapping one element over top of the other will push the other element behind and back. Now off to the right, I'm also going to put another tree in the middle ground uh, using the same colors. Again, I'm just uh, verifying uh, working on the edges, trying to simplify the amount of paint, trying to make it a little bit different over here. Again, using that uh, dot spray bottle with lemon yellow to uh, enhance the color a little bit. Just get a little, little different color here on the right hand side. A little brighter, a little darker, a little more pigment. I'm um, using just basic brush strokes here. Again, I'm going to be defining the right edge of that tree here. I'm, I'm defining the edge of that building. Here I'm overlapping the building a little bit. Adding a little more color with the spray bottle. So the overlapping of that building is going to make that building go back behind the tree line. That's what I want. I want these middle ground trees to come forward of the building and that pushes the building back into the background area. 
just ahead of those background trees. Okay, now right now I'm going to leave uh, a little bit of uh, openings here for uh, again a different uh, using a different brush strokes. This tree on the right is making a little bit different than the one I did on the left, adding a little more color from the spray bottle. Going to use some leave some sky holes open for branches and so forth. So the, the tree on the right is I'm painting it a little bit differently than the tree on the left. Again, uh, just for variety and also to be able to uh, uh, use different brush strokes. But the color is all basically the same. Uh, the tree shapes a little different, but I'm leaving a little bit of area there so I can put in some trunks uh, showing through the trees. And I'm adding more spray bottle over here to give a little more texture. Again, a little different uh, application of paint. That extra uh, color will give it a little more color, uh, a, little, a little darker color, a little more colorful than the tree on the left. Uh, that'll give me a little bit of variety in the trees. Now the foreground bushes uh, on the left side of the road, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre. Different, I changed the paint to yellow ochre, mixed in with that yellow and green. So the yellow ochre I'm going to put in, there's some foreground bushes here uh, in front of this little fence line. So this, this will define the foreground bush line next in front of the tree and coming forward along the edge of the road. Still using the uh, three quarter inch uh, flat brush from Silver Brush. A little bit of change in color. That yellow ochre's got a different uh, different color, a little, a little different tone than the uh, lemon yellow. And I'm defining the edge of that road with these bushes. Adding a little bit of greenery here uh, as I come forward along that uh, roadway. Now you make small, while the paint is still wet, I can make small minor corrections uh, using the tissue, wiping off some of that uh, excess paint because I want the road to be a little more, a little wider at that point there, so I didn't want to cover it up. And then the, then the uh, shrubs on the right hand side, uh, using the same technique, uh, using a yellow ochre wash with the yellow lemon, a little bit of green mixed in, adding some bushes here on the, the right hand side of the road. Uh, the idea of uh, using a lot of green is to make sure your greens are variable. Uh, mixing in a uh, little bit of yellow in with the green, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. Uh, you can also actually add in some blues, which I'll be doing here in a little while, adding in some darker colors for shading and shadows. Here I'm adding in a little more of that uh, texture with the, uh, the dot spray bottle. So that dot spray bottle is giving me a lot of texture. You can see the, uh, the, the varied uh, colors there with the uh, spray bottle. You can see the texture in the, in the little bushes here on the side of the road. Now, those middle ground uh, tree, I'm going to put a darker layer in here now. I'm going to layer those trees now, those middle ground trees. I add a little bit of blue in with that yellow, a little bit of uh, hooker's green, a little bit of cobalt blue. Now I'm adding a little bit of darker green into that left tree on the left. To put a little bit of shadow in there, also to break up that shape a little bit. Uh, also to, to vary the, the value of that tree. And also to show a little texture of the leaves and the groupings of the, the branches and so forth. So I'm building a little bit of tree, a little bit of tree texture over here on the left with the added green over top of that uh, yellow background, yellow green background that I put in originally. You can see the texture of the leaves now started to uh, show up uh, with those brush strokes. Again, I'm trying to minimize the amount of brush strokes. I'm just doing a minimal amount of brush work just to cover the area and to, to find that area as a, uh, a texture 
uh, a color, different values, but just to try to get uh, a different look uh, among the trees. Here I'm going to leave a little more yellow showing, and I'm going to leave those uh, areas open so I can add in some, uh, some tree trunks. Add a little darker green here, also just to break up that uh, green-yellow mix that I put in, uh, in the baseline. So the base color was uh, lemon yellow and green number one, but now I'm adding a little darker mix to uh, break up that shape, also to give it the look of a tree with the, the leaves and so forth. So minimizing my strokes, just doing just enough to uh, indicate that area. That's in the middle ground. Now moving to the foreground, where the bushes are, I'm adding a little more definition now. A little more greens up here, looking, uh, give a little texture. Uh, the brush strokes are now up and down, showing a little bit of grass. So I'm trying to define a little bit uh, of those bushes that are alongside the edge of the road. So now, dot spray bottle with, a lot dot, with the lemon yellow in there, I'm going to add some more texture. I'm putting more texture into those leaves. So that, that dot spray bottle is adding more paint. A little more yellow in there to break up the, the leaves, adding a little more texture. So you can see this dot spray bottle is giving a lot of uh, texture into that, uh, that tree, making them more, look more like leaves. Adding also green number one in a dot spray bottle. Again, adding texture now. These are dot, this is a dot spray, which is giving me light, fine dots, separate dots that are going in there to break up that foliage to make it look like trees. Now adding a little bit of water, that water will also uh, spread out those dots a little bit, give them a little irregular shape. So that'll, that'll define the edges of those dots to make them look more like a leaf structure. So adding water to that paint now will uh, modify that uh, texture of that particular application with a spray bottle. So using the spray bottles is a good way to build texture and to build up color in a particular area. And these trees this is one area that uh, I use it a lot. Now the middle ground trees, I'm going to, now I'm going to start adding a little bit of uh, uh, burnt sienna along with a yellow ochre. And I'm going to add in some uh, uh, tree trunks and leaves and, and limbs and so forth to give a little bit of, uh, a little bit of character. That darker mix now with the uh, with the brown is also going to give this a little more a little more depth, a little more definition on the left. This darker mix gives the uh, gives the tree a little more a little more definition. Again, using basic strokes, trying to minimize the amount of work on each one, simplify. Simplify the shape, just give it a, a little bit of color change, a little bit of texture, a variety of color. Using the same uh, three quarter inch flat brush, uh, just moving the paint around, also adding it to the bushes and also to the, the trees. Then I'm going to add a little bit of water now and to give me some more texture with the water. The water drops will break up the paint also will uh, provide uh, a texture. Now this, I'm using fine mist now, a fine mist sprayer with a yellow ochre. That will, that will change the color a lot more. This fine spray now will cover a bigger area uh, with a light spray, fine mist spray on that color. Again, changing the colors, adding a little color there. Instead of using the brush, I'm using the, dot spray, using the fine mist bottle uh, to uh, change that color. To enhance the color. So that's another way I can use the dot spray and the fine mist sprayer to modify the colors. Now, no, now here's where I'm going to add in the, the foreground trees. I'm going to add in, and I've changed my brush. This is a number 16 round brush uh, by Holbein, a great brush with a nice fine point to it, but it holds a lot of pigment. And here I'm adding in the trunk to this uh, tree on the left. Uh, putting in some definition here 
on the left hand side and I'm building up the uh, the shadow side of, uh, of the of the tree trunk with the dark mixture that mixture I used a little bit of ultramarine blue I've used uh, uh, the Conocron violet burnt sienna so it makes a nice dark nice, nice, a nice dark mix of dark color now I'm building up a little bit of that uh, uh, trunk inside the branches there in, in the branches and also adding a little bit of definition of the tree uh, inside that foliage uh, uh, breaking it up so that there's not a continuous line but uh, shows the definition of the uh, tree trunk and some of the branches give that tree a little more definition a little more character and this, of course this tree trunk is in shadow under the, all those branches so it will be dark. So I'm adding some branches now uh, out to the uh, out in behind those leaves and so forth. Uh, that's a large tree over there on the left. You see the large trunk that shows you the size of the tree. And I show them the sketch up here on the upper right. Uh, that's that's my uh, design plan, and uh, I'm following my design plan to uh, uh, to define the branches and the shape of the tree and so forth. So I'm going by my uh, design at this point, uh, uh, following the shapes, and yeah, make it an interesting shape of a tree and the trunks. All the branches will be different, uh, different sizes. Uh, they'll be uh, layered inside the uh, the foliage. There, I finished that tree off. I just want to move ahead. I put some more branches in there uh, to, to define that tree. Now I'm going to add some limbs, and the limbs now will, uh, what this does, this communicates the left side of the painting, it communicates to the right side of the painting. So I have a, a pathway here for the eye to follow. You follow the branches from left to right, and it'll take you from the left side of the painting to the right side of the painting. So the, the branches are important to tie in the right and left side of the painting. They give a little character to the tree, but they're also, uh, help the eye follow into that direction over to the right side so that the eye will, will continue moving around the painting uh, following the dark the dark value I'm making finer branches now because of, of the further you go out from the branches the, the branches get the limbs have turned into branches and the branches go into twigs so you get a much smaller uh, definition of the uh, the limb as it goes out. So I'm trying to show that with the fine point of that uh, number 16 round uh, brush. That big brush holds a lot but it, it comes to a nice fine point where I can do detail like this uh, with the tip of the brush. The whole bind number 16 round uh, synthetic brush. One of my favorites. Now working on definition here, getting a, a nice uh, uh, little bit, of, a little bit of calligraphy here on the on the branches, showing a little bit of definition. Not getting too carried away, but just just to give a nice characteristic of a nice big old tree there. And uh, there you see the final product where I've added in the uh, fence line. Uh, and now I'm going to add some more detail, limited details now on the fence line, the cabin, on positive negative. So I'm really going to end up here I'm painting the, the positive negative shape of this particular building. I'm just going to show enough of the definition, enough detail to define the shape of that building. So there's my uh, there's my design sketch, and I'm going to I'm going to paint in the darker value, which is the shadow area of the building. But it's also I'm going to define the uh, the shape of it, 
and it's going to find the, uh, the size and it will give a little more interest uh, to that particular shape. I'm still using that uh, number 16 round uh, brush. It does a good job on detail and uh, going down the finer detail here of the, of the uh, design, I'm going to next put in the dark areas of this building which is in shadow. Coming along the, the front edge of that uh, roof line of the cabin. And I'm defining the edges of the, uh, the fence line too. You'll see uh, I'll start putting in some of the negative shapes around the fence. So I'm painting a positive negative shape here of the building just to show enough detail of the shape of the building. Uh, this dark will uh, outline the light so that will give you that will give you the shape of the building by uh, by definition. Uh, you can fill in the blanks uh, just imagining what, what the rest of the building looks like. So painting a, not, painting not a positive and negative shapes are very important in art because it, it gives you a chance to uh, do a minimal amount of uh, just enough information to define an area or just enough information to define a subject. And uh, this gives the painting a little more interest and uh, also keeps the eye flowing, keeps the eye moving around the painting. Now I use the tissue here, uh, the paint is, is still wet, so what I'm doing is I'm lifting a little bit of that out. Uh, that is a dark area, but I don't want to get it so dark that it pulls the eye back there too much. So I want to lighten that up just a little bit so I can pull some of that paint out to lighten that color just a little bit. I don't want it to compete with that dark tree on the left, so I just took a little bit, lifted a little bit of that paint off while it was still wet and kept it uh, a light value. It's still dark enough to show the outline, but that's all I wanted to do was just lift that out. So I'm very, I'm very uh, cognizant of where I am in the painting. I'm in the background area now behind the tree, so I want the area to be a little less defined. Just enough definition, but not as defined as the tree or even as the foreground. So uh, keeping the foreground and the middle ground and background separate uh, is uh, is a task that you have to be aware of when you're painting a, a subject like this. I still want that I want that uh, uh, building or that cabin to uh, be back in the background behind the trees, behind the fence. And here I'm painting in the edge of the rooftop again just to show a shadow pattern. This will define the roof, the rooftop. And again this is a minimal uh, amount of paint just to define that particular area. You'll notice here as I'm, as I'm painting this uh, uh, cabin here in the background, I'm, I'm really just to try, I'm just minimizing the amount of uh, paint strokes and the amount of paint I'm putting on. It's just so that I'm just painting enough to define what it is, the shapes there, and let, let the imagination uh, pick up and define uh, the building by itself. Just paint enough to define what it is and then move on. So there's the end of the positive negative shape. So I went ahead and, and put in the negative shapes around the fence line and all I did was paint in between the, the railings so that they would show up. Uh, that's what the positive negative shape would look like. Okay now on the tree on the on the right I'm also adding in the uh, the tree trunks. I got the dark mix again like I used on the left. Uh, ultramarine blue, cornucanum violet, uh, burnt sienna. Uh, that'll give me a nice dark mix for the dark tree trunks. So the tree trunk over on the left is going to be a little bit different, a little smaller, and I'll have some extra branches up there up there in those uh, sky holes. So this is a little bit different. Uh, the tree is a little bit closer but it's also got a little different uh, configuration of the branches. And that's important. I want to keep the, the tree on the right uh, looking different than the tree I did on the left. A little, little variety in the painting, but also to give it a, uh, a different look.
put in some of the smaller, put in some of the smaller uh, limbs and branches, a tree, little smaller tree trunks there in the back for smaller trees. It's kind of a, a grouping of trees back there on the right. So I'm just kind of, now here I'm putting in some branches now in that, in that sky hole to kind of define that particular side of shape in there. And that kind of makes it look like you're looking through the tree, uh, through the spaces there, into the background. So it makes that tree on the right here a little bit different than the tree on the left. Give a little bit different look, uh, a little bit different uh, technique, and a little bit different painting on the right hand side. Using those sky openings now, I'll take advantage of those and put in some, some bare limbs showing through to give that tree a little more characteristic. Now using a smaller brush, I'm going to go down and work a little bit on the uh, foreground shapes, and that's the uh, bushes on the right, uh, and a little bit of uh, branches and so forth. I'm going to break up that area a little bit, get a little more definition. Putting some edges uh, of some of the bushes, some of the, putting edges of some of the background trees around that uh, uh, bushes there that in front of the trees. I'm trying to break it up. Just I'm defining the edges here uh, to define that difference between the tree line and the uh, the bushes. Now I'm just continuing on with that. I'm putting a little more definition there behind that bush line, uh, separating the bushes from the, uh, the background or the middle ground trees, I'm trying to separate the foreground from the from the middle ground just by putting a little more value behind there, uh, adding a little more color, uh, make it a little bit darker there behind that bush line, a little more definition. So just a little bit of little bit of detail brushwork here. Uh, to break that to break that shape up a little bit and to bring that uh, bring those bushes forward with that shadow behind Here, adding a little, still a little more, a uh, little more definition. Trying to break that, break that shape up on the right, and uh, give it a little more, a little more definition, uh, a little more shape. Showing, I'm painting positive, negative here. Well, show some of the, some of the uh, branches of the bushes. So this negative painting now is also a painting behind uh, some of that sh to build a shape that looks like a, a branch or branches of that bush bushes on the on the foreground so negative painting here now is going to be uh, painting a dark value around a light value so I'm highlighting the branches by painting behind them so here's another example of a positive negative painting to bring out a, a shape or to define an area I give it a little more interest, 
uh, also to give it a little more definition of what we're looking at. Here we're looking at our bushes, and therefore we got branches and twigs and uh, shadows. And this kind of breaks up that shape a little bit to give a little more, a little more interest, a little more definition that it's a bush. Now you start seeing the shape of the, sh the shape of the branches. So this takes uh, take your time. This is an area where you take your time uh, and you build out as much as you feel necessary along this line to give it a little more definition, a little more structure, a lot more interest, breaking up that shape. And I think that negative painting, this is a good place to put it, uh, to show some of the dark and light areas and also indicating uh, branches and something behind that bush line. Now moving over here to the left side of the road, uh, I'm going to do some of this, a similar thing over here, something. I'm going to define some of the bushes here, a little negative, little negative painting here to separate and break up some of the shapes here. Uh, to make it look like grass, tall grass, or tall weeds. Painting in some of the uh, positive and negative shapes here. Making that tree pop up a little bit behind uh, with the grass right in front of it. Now I'm taking a pencil. I'm going to uh, draw myself a small outline here because I want to put in uh, little shapes here but I'm giving myself a little design here with uh, using a pencil and I do this when I find an area that I want to uh, add to I'll use a pencil or something just to give me an idea to give me some uh, maybe a shape that I want to define a shape here I'm again I'm putting in some negative shapes here in this foreground uh, to break up this area here to make it look more like a bush with some limbs and some branches. Again, this breaks up the uh, breaks up the shape here on the left hand side of the road, and it gives me a chance to uh, uh, paint a little bit of negative painting, positive negative painting to bring out some of that shape. So I'm painting behind the actual object. I'm trying to bring out the branches and the and the uh, trunks of some of these bushes. So what I'm doing is I'm painting a color behind, a darker color behind that so that the, the lighter color shows out. And that's the technique of positive and negative. Is to paint behind another shape to, to bring out or de define what that area is. So I'm doing some loose butt strokes here again just to break this shape up a little bit uh, to make it look a little more interesting. And, and to break up that uh, shape that had nothing there other than just a, a color blob, but to uh, to break it up with some uh, light and dark areas shows a little more texture, and it shows that uh, you know there's, there's a gra grasses and things like that growing over here on the edge of the road. Now I'm going to add some, a uh, little bit of de the only detail I'm going to put to the barn. Uh, I'm going to add just a little bit of rough brush. This is a dry brush technique. I'm just going to put that across the, uh, the rooftop. Uh, this could be an old tin roof, aluminum roof. And here I'm showing some of the rough texture of the roof. So I'm just dragging a dry brush, a small brush with very little paint in it. Kind of breaking up that shape back there. It's a, it was a all all one shape, one color. So this kind of breaks it up and uh, puts a little a little. It's in the background, so I don't want too much definition. I don't want to be too dark, but just enough indication, enough enough of a mark back there to break that up and give it the look of a an old tin roof on the top of that on top of that old cabin back there.
But just a, just a little definition back there on that on that barn or, or cabin, cabin in the woods. Here I'm adding a little bit of shadows under the uh, under the fence line. Uh, the shine, the sun is shining it in there and down there, so this casts a shadow, and also bring that shadow out here on the road on the roadway. So I'm putting a little texture and showing a little shadow pattern here from the trees, with the uh, with the light coming through the trees there from uh, right to left. I got the shadow pattern. Uh, coming across to, to define the particular uh, direction of the light. So this puts a light shadow pattern uh, into that area. Now I'll darken it up. I'm going to use a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in with that uh, little bit of cornucronum violet, a little bit, mo mostly burnt sienna. And I'm going to do a little bit of dry brush here and drag some of that color underneath the uh, fence line, more of a, sh a little darker shadow pattern under there. And then I'm going to drag that out on the roadway. I'm going to darken up those ruts, uh, give a little more shadow, a little more definition of the road. So I'm dragging that roadway, making the ruts a little bit darker. Old country road. with dirt. Here I keep it uh, keep it rough, give it a lot of give a little bit of lots of texture because it's uh, it's dirt and sand. So it's been there for a long time so it's uh, been traveled over uh, many times. So just rough it up a little bit with some uh, dry brush strokes. Now I'm adding a little bit of a yellow ochre into the edges of the grassway there. Kind of break it up, rough it up a little bit. And adding that yellow ochre mixture in with the burnt sienna. Again, to vary the color. Add a little more texture. We're coming to the finished painting. This is uh, cabin in the woods and uh, uh, I wanted to show the minimization of using a minimum amount of brush strokes to do a painting. I call this painting a cabin in the woods. And all those uh, supplies I'm using on this video are available at my website everswatercolors.com. Don't forget to, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Press the bell to be notified of my next video. And give me a thumbs up. It helps with my ratings. See you on the next video.